we've taken a look at the Ender 3. Let's go a little bit bigger. This is a generic CR10 V3 as far as I can tell. Let's get into it. Hey, thanks again for joining us. If you remember back, we unboxed and looked at an Ender 3 V2 and I was pleasantly surprised considering what we paid and quite frankly, my expectations were set kind of low on that one. But we'll card to that video somewhere right above me. This is not a CR10 V3, although it should be. It is a Pyramid A1 Titan, which as far as I can tell is a CR10 V3. It's got a Titan direct drive system, a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build area, a silent, we're gonna put quotes on silent motherboard, we'll see how that one pans out, max nozzle temperature of 250 degrees centigrade, so likely not an all metal hot end, bed temp of 110, pretty standard there. It says it's an easy add on for a BL touch, well, we're gonna find that one out soon. Resume printing, we're gonna test that. Filament runout sensor, we're gonna test that. And a 3.5 inch LCD touchscreen. You are gonna be seeing my review of this printer. I will have already unboxed it and take an initial look at it. If you wanna see that, we'll card to that video for you. It will be coming very soon. And there you have it, a CR10 V3. Print is, it's okay. Uh, as to be expected, untuned profiles, very stock. It is louder than I expected, but not for the printing. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The freaking fans are crazy loud. Um, with a printer this big, you really do want to have mesh bed leveling, and don't worry, we're going to be doing that real soon. There are some things I want to talk about. The big thing is the cable management. Uh, it is non-existent. There is no good place to put the cables where they don't just like randomly drag on crap, and especially, and we'll show with the top-down camera, the bed because as the bed moves, you can see it drags on the wires for the end stop switch, which is a little ridiculous if you ask me. I don't know how well this will hold up over time, so something to be aware of if this is a printer that you're looking to buy. It could likely benefit from some nylon filament or something in there to give it a little bit more stiffness, so it's not all limp and floppy-like. I think that the Z braces are a really nice addition and something that if you have a printer this size and you don't have these, might not be a bad addition. Although I will say their attachment points and the way that they attach is um, not great. It's serviceable, but it's not great. It's all cantilevered forces and I don't really want to get into any of that today, but the Benchy, of course, it is in the crazy acid greens. The cameras don't pick it up, but has some retraction issues, has some cooling issues, hilariously, even though the bow of the Benchy was facing the fan. It has a little bit of cooling issues, but nothing a new fan duct and some tuning couldn't fix. It did also warp on the plate, so this material did not stick all that well. That's not what we're here to test. Before we end this video, we're going to test filament runout, and to do that, we're literally just going to cut the filament. And yes, this filament is crap, I don't like it, never have liked it, and this is like the same issue that I had with some of these real cheap printers. One, this whole axis is not tensioned properly, but two, it's loud. They only put silent steppers on the X and Y, the Z is full noise, but I guess you're not going to be moving up and down that much 
Consider this like a buzzer. This should be reasonably well set. We'll see. And what we're going to do is during the print, we're going to cut the filament. We're going to see if the filament runout sensor works. We're going to do filament runout sensor just like, I ah, will do that. And we'll see, because the filament runout sensor is right here. So if it does work, we're going to see it together. All right, it's going through. Let's see what happens. Hey! Hilariously, it will beep and yell at you when it's out of filament, but it won't beep and yell at you for thermal runaway. Okay, okay, okay. Do you shut up? You seriously, are you gonna keep doing that? Okay, cool, I'm going to unload. That was a very violent push and I think, yep, it failed to unload the filament. Might have just broke the filament sensor, but like, you know, when your printer says, hey, I'm out of filament. <sighs> this happened to me earlier too when I was trying to unload the filament. It ends up with this big glob on it. Quality. All right, let's confirm. We're gonna go ahead and load. Confirm. Oh, that's a very violent load. Are we? Sure, you know what? You say you're loaded. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to assume that you know what you're doing, printer. If this printer's going to alarm for when it's out of filament, but it's not going to alarm for thermal runaway, we've got ourselves a problem here. And I... I don't know, man. If you want to see the entire thermal runaway test, you guys can check out the full unboxing that we did of the printer. It's coming soon. The review is always the first thing that comes out, then the unboxing comes out. But uh, I'm a little mad now. Because if they're going to code in the ability for the buzzer to go crazy when the printer is out of filament, but they're not going to do it for thermal runaway, What's their priority here? Now, mind you, I said before, I don't like the firmware that's on this machine, so we're probably gonna reflash it anyways, or I can enable all of these things. Now, I don't want to do this, clearly. It's not what I want to do. But as soon as we put on a bed probe anyways, we're gonna have to reflash the printer. Hilariously, the printer comes with new firmware already on the SD card because it is compatible with the BL Touch. So it does come with the BL Touch firmware, but it is, absent, as far as I can tell, of a mounting location for said BL Touch. Now, since this printer wants a BL Touch, maybe we'll go with the BL Touch first, and I also happen to have those in stock. Maybe we can compare that to a uh, an inductive probe, or a capacitive probe, I guess is the correct term, uh, like a TH3D. Okay, so it's trying to do some form of power loss detection. What it's doing, I have not a freaking clue. So, don't expect this to have power loss detection. Your mileage may vary. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of bummed that it says that it does something and it definitely doesn't. This is one of the crappiest fake titans I have ever seen in my life, but it's still serviceable, so meh. Uh, overall, we paid $250 for this on sale. I can't really be too mad. This is easily $250 worth of 3D printer, but at $350, you're expecting it to do what it says, and it doesn't. Now again, this is not a Creality CR10V3. This is a clone CR10V3. So the real Creality one might be a little bit better, but you know, at the price point, I'll just reflash it with a new firmware. And I think a lot of hobbyists out there would choose to do the same thing to save a fair bit of money. I believe a CR10V3 from Creality runs closer to the $400 range. And if you can find this on sale for $250, that's a pretty good deal, I would say. I mean, that's less than a full price Ender 3 v 2 Do I like this printer as a business? Absolutely not. It is unreliable, unsafe, and quite frankly, no. I like that it has a direct drive extruder that makes it way easier to tune things in like retraction. However, it does limit you on speed, but hey, I don't believe bed slingers should get any larger than this. It's a Cartesian printer, so the bed 
moves as well. When you're dealing with parts that big, if you don't have an enclosure for this printer, you tend to have warpage even on PLA. I hate the glass surface. I've said that before. They're okay, but they're just not my favorite. I would much rather have a PEI build sheet. Your mileage may vary there. As a hobbyist, do I like it? Absolutely. And I'm glad that I paid $250 for it. If I paid $350, I would probably be a little bit upset. These are quality of life things that you expect out of this price point. And while I was hoping for something better, you can't always get what you want. You can. It's just a big Ender 3. It does have two lead screws, which is nice. It's got dual Z-axis, so can't knock that. Uh, but you know, the power supply is fake. The touch screen is kind of janky and so many freaking fingerprints. Uh, but you know what? This printer is going to stay in the fleet. It's I've also had it for like two months, so it's way past its return period anyways. And for the hour that it took to assemble it, video coming soon, by the way. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of invested in this thing. I do like the red powder coating. I just wish they put the money they put into the red powder coating into better firmware. I'd take black powder coating with better firmware, and I don't think there's very few people that wouldn't. That's my opinion. I'd love to know yours down in those comments. TLDR. Not a bad printer, as long as you're a hobbyist. Do not expect this thing to work amazingly out of the box. It does not have power resume. Uh, it does, however, have a usable filament runout sensor. The E3D Titan clone is serviceable. Not all metal hot end, cheap as expected. And the fact that it states that it has power loss recovery and doesn't is upsetting to me and I think really the most egregious error about this printer is that it will yell at me when I don't have filament but it will not yell at me if I don't have a thermistor effectively putting the printer into thermal runaway so you guys decide cable management's kind of meh as well this should not touch the build plate but very easily solved I'd love to know your thoughts down in those comments that's all I got on this Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Like dealing with the spider. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to talk about your car's extended warranty? And so he's back. The Pothos is here. We finally remembered to bring him in. He enjoyed his little stent outside. We actually clipped some pieces of him and he's hanging out in the various fish tanks throughout the house. So he will be back soon in full glory. It's a living plant. Give me a break here. Actually, Pothos don't like being outside in Florida unless they're under trees. The more you know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Right below me is going to be the Ender 3 playlist, and next to it is going to be a video perfectly handpicked just for you. Make sure you get subscribed, leave a like, I will see you down in the comments. Take care.